Hello everybody, this is Blastertoad again, and this is not one of the platformer videos. This is something a little different for the Unreal Engine tutorial. So this here was actually requested of me uh, December 2016, uh, the 20th of December 2016. Uh, generally got a hold of me on Facebook and asked uh, for two things that I'm going to do. Uh, the first one of which here is um, a object moving when you haven't looked at it for a while. Okay? So apparently he's going for like the horror game or something like that. So when you look an object that moves when you don't look at it. So let's give that a go. So I'm here in my gun soccer project just so that I have a character that moves around. This way we don't have to rebuild this. And, um, what we're going to do is, uh, we are going to build something from scratch. So we are going to get a new blueprint class, and we're going to make a pawn. Does it have to be a pawn? No, it could have been an actor, but we'll just make it a pawn in case we want to possess it later. And this is going to be our angel. For those of you who don't know what I'm referencing here with Weeping Angel, go watch some Doctor Who, please. You sadden me. Okay, so we're going to add a component. Our component is going to be a cube. I am going to stretch out this cube. Just so we have a larger, more intimidating object to follow us around. Okay. Do, 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 do. Then we are going to. Um, what are we gonna do? Are we... We're gonna do this on event tick. I think that's the best way to do this is event tick. So we wouldn't want too many of these since it has to do this calculation every every frame of the game. But to have a couple of these, I, I think like three or four of these things that move when you aren't looking at it and you're trying to keep them in your view is going to be scary enough. Uh, so the main thing that we're going to be using is was recently rendered. Okay, so this is a fairly new node as far as I'm aware. Was recently rendered. So it just checks, was this actor drawn in a tolerance of so many seconds? So let's do um, five. Was this actor drawn within the last five seconds? And then we're gonna do a branch because this is returning a Boolean. We're gonna do a, a branch here. So if it was drawn, we do nothing, okay? Because we've looked at it and it's not moving. But if it was not drawn recently, we are going to Get, can we get a look at direction? Ah, uh, direction. Direction. I'm sure there's something to rotate to. Hmm. Ah, we don't really need to rotate it. Anyway. We are going to set location. That's what we're going to do. Set location, set actor location. There we go. Okay. And then we are going to get actor Location. Uh, we are also going to um, of class get all actors of class. So this is going to give us all the actors of a specific class, and we are going to make that player. So it's going to find all of our players out in the world. Okay. 
Then we're going to do a four each. No, nope, we're going to um, get, because there's only going to be one. We'll drag off this pin and get. There we go. So we'll get the index of zero. So get the first index. Remember, zero base count is what Unreal Engine's using. So zero is always the first. That can take a little bit of getting used to, I know. And then we want to V interp. Or is it an L interp? Anyway, we're going to type in interp. V interp 2, that's what we want to get. And we're going to get our current location of our angel, so just getting itself. And then this one here, we are also going to get its current location. And that's where we're going to. Okay. And then delta time. We are going to, how are we going to judge that time? Oh, we're going to say it takes, they're fast. They only take 20 seconds to get to you, no matter where they're at. And an interp speed of, ah, let's try with 0.5 and see what that does for us. So. What this should do is check every frame of the game if the angel was recently drawn, and by recent we mean the last five seconds. Uh, it wouldn't hurt to make this a variable so that we can set different angels to different time stamp or time periods. Okay, we are then going to get actors of class player, and we're just going to get the first one. It's going to get the closest player. Okay. The first one that it gets from its list. And then we are going to do a vector interpolation. So it is going to slowly interpret itself or quickly. We're going to have to play with these values, really. So it's going to interpret from its current location to the location of the actor. So it's going to try to move to the actor. And it's going to get somewhere in there and set the location between those points. So, let's... Oh, I guess um, we need to put our Weeping Angel out here. Oh, our Weeping Angel is freaking huge. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's not going to be scary at all. Hello, freaking huge thing. One, two, three. Ah, oh, you're still there. One, two, three, four. Ah, oh, you're still there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Why are you not coming for me? Come on. Oh, and there it is. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess we should be careful. And there it is again. Okay. So yeah. Uh, we might want to change these variables a bit. So let's see if we do like a one there. And it's going to take... 60 seconds, okay, and it's going to take three seconds of looking away. So if I look away for three seconds, it's going to start moving. Time since last tick, 60. Okay, I'm really not sure how this is working. Okay, let's, um, let's do this instead as a test. So we're going to see how that actually moves towards me. Oh, okay. Going to set that to one, that to one. OK. 
Okay, so it's still coming like right after us. We're gonna set this to a 20. Let's see what that does. No, that's still coming for it. Way too quick. 0.1. So this V interp 2, I'm just playing with values to see. There we go. So the lower the value there. Okay. And then what happens if we do like five there? Does that make it slower? No, that makes it faster. What if we do like a 0.2 over here? There we go. So we can do this like a 0.05. So now it starts slowly coming for us. It's gonna follow us around, follow us around. But we can kind of outrun it. Okay. I think this is getting where we want it. How about we try a point 0.1 in this value? Because I am just pushing values in here like crazy. Okay, yep, yeah, I like that. We can get away. Okay. So. Now we are going to use our recently rendered. And we are going to break that other connection. So now this should be set up. So after playing with our vector interpolation values, which now that I know how those work a little better, I'll be able to do something else in my own game project. Uh, so now that we've got that going on and we're getting the nearest player, Oh. And then we're interpolating to them, and then we're moving to them. Uh, we could do a rotation in here as well. Uh, there is... I can't remember whether it's vanilla or whether it's part of Rama's. It's like a get-look-at direction. Find, look at, rotation. There we go. And then we could do, like this and this and then we could do a set rotation actor set actor rotation and then we could get actor rotation all of a sudden we're making a scary doctor who game Hell, this might become my new game project. That'd be awesome. And then we're going to do a R interp 2. R interp 2. Or, better yet, we could do a T in interp 2. Okay? So. We could split that and split that and we will get rid of those and set actor transform there we go so we're going to take care of everything in one node so instead of doing a vector and a rotator we're going to do everything as a as a transform which, if we line it all up nicely here, should be cleaner looking in our event graph. So there's our current location. We want to straighten that up and straighten that up. And our scale is going to stay at 111. Target location is going to be the other actor. Straighten that up, bring it over there. The target rotation, so we're just going to move everything around here. Ooh. Move all of this around. Seriously? Okay, we're going to bring that down then. Instead, we are going to move this up like that. We are then going to find this look at rotation from our angel's location and our actor's location. And that is going to be our new rotation value. And a scale of one still. 
And we can straighten that up and move that node around just like that. And then we're going to do a 0.1 and a 0.05 so that we can still outrun it. But when we go in and do a puzzle of some sort in our game and we take time, it is going to catch up with us. Straighten connection. Da -da -da, there we go. We'll move all this up just a bit bit for tidiness sakes and we're actually going to straighten here and straighten keeping all of the blueprints nice and clean so that we can easily read it later there is a point to cleaning up your blueprints so that should set our rotation we are going to go back to our previous setup to test that out so it now rotates to look at us as well the rotation's a little slow which is kind of weird but hey whatever it it is rotating to look at us now. <laughs> so we are now going to set this up. So break that link. So now we are now relying again on our recently rendered view. Okay, so if we're looking at it, nothing. And then one, two, three, four. Hello. Walk away. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Next time it should be right on us. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, that works as intended. So there you go. We can have a Weeping Angel-esque creature that follows you around when you are not looking at it. Let's do one more time a quick run through. So, we have our actor here. We open up our actor. We are on event tick. Checking was recently rendered. Okay. And the tolerance of how many seconds ago it was recently rendered. If it was not rendered within that tolerance, we are going to get the actors out in play. We are then going to get our current transform, so our location and rotation. We are going to get our actors location and the rotation of looking at our actor. And then we set that with a set transform node. Okay. In this case, set transform may have been the wrong idea. Uh, a, maybe the original set the rotation and the location separately so that it can turn quicker, then it, um, it, it'll it turn quicker and look at you and then start moving. Uh, might be a better idea. But who knows, we'll... Um, We'll leave that up to the end user. But that is a very interesting little mechanic of having something chase you when you're not looking at it. And yeah, hope that's helpful to you. Hopefully you enjoy that tutorial. And we'll see you all next time. Bye for now.